So last week we discussed what Walmart might want if it decided to snag Jet.com. And today we have the news that the company is in fact acquiring Jet.com in a deal worth $3 billion. Joining us to talk about this is Jason Abruzzese from Mashable. How's it going, Jason? Good. Thanks for having me on, guys. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to get you here. So first things first, what does Walmart get in this deal that it doesn't already have? Probably first and foremost, it gets one of the most highly regarded people in all of e-commerce, Mark Laurie. Uh, he's a guy who has already sold one startup to Amazon and was able to convince a lot of people that he could uh, you know, mount another comeback and another company that could possibly compete with Amazon. So I think really the takeaways for the deal first and foremost have to be about him. More, more along the aqua hire of a really incredible get than uh, than kind of the technology behind it. I mean, is this a victory um, or defeat for Mark? Because I'm sure when he went into, you know, the, planning Jet.com, I'm sure he had greater ambitions. But maybe, maybe the status, maybe what three billion dollars satisfies those ambitions. What do you think? I mean, three billion dollars would satisfy my ambitions certainly. <laughs> um, I think that if you talked to him when he was first starting this company and you said, uh, you know. What if you, you know, sold out in a couple of years to Walmart for $3 billion? He probably wouldn't say like, yes, that's the goal. Right. Uh, but I do think that's something he was able to say to uh, investors, basically that, listen, on the upside, maybe we turn this into, you know, a tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars uh, in market cap company, or worst case scenario, we sell out to a Walmart and you guys, you know, triple, quadruple your money pretty quickly. Uh, it's, it's maybe not the loftiest goal he had, but it's certainly not, you know, a disappointment or a failure, I would say. So Mark Laurie started diapers.com, soap.com, diapers.com, of course, was 1-800-diapers.com first. Um, they, they sold that to Amazon. So he was essentially working for Amazon, and he left Amazon and then wanted to take on Amazon. I mean, I get that he is, you know, he had robots, the Kiva robots managing a lot of the, the stuff, getting things from place to place, and he's supposedly this genius of e-commerce. But, I mean, is there any fear that he's, I mean, is that is that a commonplace where people just leave a company and want to take on that company right afterwards? I think it's somewhat rare, but you will probably see that, you know, if you look into kind of the, the history of some of these companies of pe people who break out, um, we've seen some great examples of people who've actually gotten rejected from companies and then end up, uh, you know, joining them later through a big acquisition. WhatsApp probably being one of the, the best examples of a person who was kind of spurned away from Facebook and Facebook bought them back for $16 billion. So I don't think you see people leaving quite like this and then immediately turning around the company trying to take, take you know, on the, where they left on straight away. But it's not terribly uncommon to see people leave places or, or get spurned from places and then later on down the road end up rejoining them. Hmm. Um, is this, in, from Walmart's perspective, is this about kind of protecting against the kind of comp you know, competitive nature, the competitive power of Amazon, or is it about becoming kind of like the next Amazon, taking what, what what's worked for Walmart and brick and mortar and making it work online in a different fashion? I mean, in a sense, yes. I think it's about trying to play catch up to Amazon at this point. Right. You see how much Amazon sells online compared to Walmart. Uh, Walmart's a, a distant, distant second. I don't even know if they're actually technically number two in all of e-commerce. So I think what they're seeing is, you know, if Amazon's whittling away our business relatively quickly now, we have to do something drastic to, to turn this around. Uh, Walmart had previously stated that they were you know, going to be doubling down on e-commerce in the last couple of years. We haven't seen too much success from that. Mm -hmm. They've been growing sales, but not at the rate they want to. This is a move to try to say, like, not only are we going to acquire a business that was doing pretty well, Jet.com was doing, I think they were saying maybe it was going to do a billion dollars in in revenue this year, which you know sounds like a lot, but is actually pretty small in this market. Uh, they're acquiring a, a company that is growing and a person who they think can also lead them into the next generation and compete with Amazon. What about the Walmart brand in this sense? I mean, Jet.com, relatively new, so it's not like they have a ton of, you know, uh, I don't know, you know, a large amount of people just in the marketplace that understands or knows what a jet.com actually is, especially compared to the brand recognition behind Walmart. There are a lot of people that would, you know, would just say the word Walmart gives them a sour taste in their mouth. Could that rub off on jet.com uh, in this deal? I mean, maybe a little bit, but like you said, I don't know that the average person really even knew what jet.com was. Mm -hmm. And and I think that Walmart, if it's smart, can kind of keep its brand separate here. Uh, a lot of what they do might start powering Jet.com, but I think you'll see Jet.com kind of try to make its own brand and, and kind of push forward under its own umbrella and see if they can't kind of, yeah, maybe get away from that idea of, 
of, of what Walmart has become to some competitors, which is, yeah, like you kind of insinuate, not the most positive thing. Um, it's certainly not an des- a e-commerce destination, I would say. I don't, right. I don't know. Maybe some people do, but I don't ever think, oh, I want to buy, you know, uh, some new socks. I'm going to go look on walmart.com. Sure. <laughs> so we covered this a little bit last week when we uh, covered the rumors that this was going to happen. But for people don't who don't understand, Jet.com started um, with a $50 subscription fee. They were going to be like an Amazon just for the selling stuff for $50. But then they changed. And now how does it work? Is it the more you buy, the less things cost? Yeah, they have some uh, technology. Their special sauce was supposed to be if we package certain things together that you buy from us, you're going to get a discount. And and at scale, that can work very well because it allows you to transport things in a very economical way. It allows you to kind of uh, get more money out of people if you're con- you can convince them to buy that extra product if they get a little bit of a discount. So I'm not sure if, if Walmart will be pursuing that aggressively, but I think it has to become part of what they do. Amazon does this as well on kind of like a a slightly like subtler way it'll say like would you also like to wrap in this purchase with that so it's not something terribly unique um i also don't think we're going to see the return of that costco type model uh where it was a membership to get to to buy stuff amazon's done that very intelligently by offering other things like shipping uh music obviously their their sizable video uh library Interesting. All right. Well, uh, prepare for everyone to know what Jet.com is someday in the near future. Uh, Jason Abrazizi from Mashable, thanks so much for joining us. As always, where, where do you want people to find all your work online? Mashable.com. I got a, I got a, I got a hawk for the, the, the bosses here. Excellent. All right. You're also on Twitter, so follow him on Twitter as well. Thanks again, Jason. Take yeah, care. thanks both y'all. All right. Take care.